Okay, guys, here we go with Alabama playing Clemson for the national championship. I thought I would do my first post-game thoughts video on the Fiesta Bowl to get you guys a little bit familiar with Clemson, some of the things I saw, some of the things that might be important to note as the game is coming up. Um, when Ohio State was going to play Clemson, I was like, yeah, Clemson's got this one. That was my prediction from the beginning because Ohio State's been struggling all year, and JT Bear hasn't looked the same, and he – they, the offense has just been inept, especially passing the ball. And so going against Clemson with how disruptive they are, it just wasn't a good matchup for them. And so I'll just jump right into it. So to start the game and throughout the game at times, you saw OSU's O-line hold up pretty well against this Clemson defensive front. Just a few times here and there, but for the most part, Clemson really was disruptive with Watkins and Wilkins. And it'll be interesting to see what they do. Uh, but yeah, just starting out, it was it was intense. And so at the 13 minute, 15 second mark of the first quarter, uh, Mike Williams, the Clemson receiver, he slipped uh, and it led to that interception by Deshaun Watson, uh, the first interception that he threw. And honestly, Watson should have thrown the ball a little bit more toward the sideline and that way that would have only allowed his receiver to get the ball. But by him throwing it a little bit more infield, the DB was able to make a play on the ball and get the interception. So, Williams slipping made it an accident, but Washington also should have thrown it a little bit better. At right, the 11 minute 50 second mark of the first quarter, um, Ohio State stuffed the line of scrimmage. Um, they were able to hold up Clemson's offensive line there, so that was interesting to see. At the 11 minute 10 second mark of the first quarter, uh, Deshaun Watson, he decided to run pretty quickly. I remember seeing this play, like he got the ball and he looked down the field for maybe one or two seconds, and he took off as if his uh, second read was to run with the ball. Um, at the 10 minute 42 second mark, Deshaun Watson showed off his accuracy here. He hit Mike Williams on, on in stride on a on a deeper slant route, and it was pretty good. Like he hit Mike Williams, Mike Williams kept going. It was, yeah, he was just extremely accurate. Some of his throws that he makes is just it's absolutely amazing, especially in shorter to medium range throws. At the 9 minute 58 second mark of the first quarter, the Ohio State run defense um, it showed up again. Like I said, throughout the game, they got a few times where they stuffed the uh, run on Clemson, and that was going to make Deshaun Watson throw the ball a little bit more. At the 9 minute 25 second mark, OSU disguised their zone coverage really well, and they made Watson throw long. And so that, that ability to uh, get into Deshaun Watson's head a little bit, make it a bit, bit of a chess match, because he's a junior, so he's seen plenty of defenses here in college, and he knows what to expect for the most part. So you have to switch it up a little bit, and Ohio State did a good job there. The defense actually played – pretty well all day. It's just their offense didn't help them out at all. And I think that was one of the reasons why Clemson was able to get up 31 points because the Ohio State defense played really good, to give them credit. It's just that they, they couldn't score, and that, and that really doomed them from the beginning. So they made him throw long on that play. Um, Ohio State's number 21. That guy is fast on that kickoff return. He showed up just how smooth he is. Some guys just look fast. And they went and running, but he's kind of got the smooth fastness to it. <laughs> it kind of reminds me a bit of John Ross and uh, it was just an interesting guy. I just thought that'd be really nice to see. So that was at the nine minute, 10 second mark. He had a long kickoff return. Um, I noticed that Clemson is still a little bit undisciplined. Uh, last year, that led to some of the reason why they were defeated too by Alabama. They're an uh, undisciplined team on the kickoff return sometimes with their penalties and and, and that showed up a little bit again. I think some of that has to do with Dabo, you know, the type of coach that he is. He's a good coach. Uh, more of a player's coach type guy, as they like to say. I won't necessarily like that wording, but I'll use it here to make the point. Um, maybe not so much getting into the details as much as someone like Nick Saban would, and that's why you see Nick Saban teams being a little bit more disciplined. Uh, discipline as in, like, uh, adhering to assignments consistently, and not discipline as in, you know, punishment or whatnot. Uh, the nine-minute mark of the first quarter, it was a good decision by JT Barrett to take off and run against the zone covers. Um, Clemson draw back in zone. JT uh, made a good decision here. Some, you know, they criticize him for holding the ball too long, but this time, you know, he decided to do something with it, and that worked. At the eight-minute mark, JT Barrett threw high uh, to his receiver, uh, to Samuel. Um, and the way he threw the ball, I think it ended up, was it an interception here? Yeah, he threw high to Samuel. And, oh, it may not have been an interception on this play. I may be thinking about a play later on in the game. But I do remember, yeah, but he threw it too high to Sammy. Sammy had no way to get it. And that just shows you one of the, uh, some of what's been going on this year. Like, when he's throwing the ball, he's missing guys. And he's also holding on to the ball too long. And you can't do that against Clemson with how fast they are on defense. 
Also, at the 8 minute 45 second mark of the first quarter, Clemson dominated the line of scrimmage to stuff the run. So Ohio State had trouble running the ball at times and in the game as well. At the 6 minute 15 second mark, JT Barrett had so much time to throw that he got jittery. You know how quarterbacks, they, 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 they get a lot of time in the pocket and then they think, wait, I'm not supposed to have this much time. And they start moving around, start running around a little bit and don't know what to do. He started to do that. And he ended up just floating it out the back of the end zone instead of making a check down or one of those type of plays. And then the kicker missed the second kick of the day. And so Ohio State actually had chances to get points. They could have had six points at least in this game. Kicker missed both of the kicks. The five minute, 27 second mark in the first quarter, it was a quick release from Deshaun Watson and an accurate two. He threw the ball so fast. Um, that's one of his attributes. He can get rid of the ball just like that. Even if you're on him, he just, the ball's gone. So he did a good job there and really showed off some of the things that makes him a great quarterback prospect. Um, at the 4 minute 58 second mark of the first, watching through a beautifully lofted pass toward the sideline against perfect coverage by the um, Ohio State DB number 12. I don't remember his name right now, but the DB number 12. The, the, the Ohio State DB was right in the Clemson receiver's grill, just all in his face, was turned around, put his hands up, and um, I think it was Mike Williams who caught the ball, but it was perfect placement on the ball. It was headed toward the sideline where DB couldn't get his hand on the ball, and the ball landed right where um, Deshaun Watson's receiver can get it. And that was at the 4 minute 58 second mark. Um, Marshawn Lattimore, the Ohio State DB, he got hurt a bit in the game. I think he was able to come back in. He just got a little dicked up there after that point. Um, he was one of their better defensive backs. At the 4 minute 10 second mark of the first quarter, the Clemson line gave Watson a lot of time. So at times, the Ohio State defense couldn't do nothing to get to Deshaun Watson. And that was one of those times. But interesting thing is that Watson overthrew Mike Williams against the man coverage a bit. Um, the way he threw the ball out there, he uh, basically Mike Williams just didn't have a chance to really get a grab on the ball, do it a little bit too far. And that's a theme that he uh, has when he's going down the field. Uh, and like a lot of quarterbacks do, throwing the ball deep is hard to hit the receivers right in accuracy and stride, but you have to make those throws to make the defense respect you. And at times, with the way he throws the ball, the ball will either be, it won't have enough air on it and it will go far, or he'll, um, basically he'll just completely overshoot it. And so it's, it's really interesting to see that sometimes. Now, accurate throw to Hunter Renfro right after that at the 2 minute 35 second mark from Watson. He hit Hunter Renfro on a little out route going toward the sideline, and Renfro was able to turn up the field. That's the type of accuracy you need on out routes to make your receiver turn up the field and get more yards. Um, the OSU left guard number 73, I heard a little bit after that. But the two-minute, ten-second mark of the first quarter, uh, Curtis Samuel, he tried all that he could uh, to make something happen, but Clemson stuffed him. I remember this play. He had like three jukes in the backfield. So Clemson D-line really stuffed him. Ohio State tried to rush the block, and they tried to push some guys back. But Curtis Samuel got the ball, and he realized he didn't have nowhere to go. He juke left, turned back to the middle, juke right turn back, and he just had nowhere to go. He tried to make something happen, got maybe a yard or maybe a stuff for no gain. And that really shows you how good of a, um, how well they protected the line of scrimmage on that play and how they could be consistently if they did that consistently. At the 1 minute 45 second mark, JT Barrett threw a very accurate dig route to a receiver. And it was due to great pass protection. He had time to make this throw, and he didn't hold on to the ball too long. He threw the ball to the receiver and hit him on a dig route. Um, last play of the first quarter, Clemson secondary caused a covered sack. And um, it's because that Barrett was holding on to the ball again. Of course, he could have gotten rid of the ball. Um, he was looking for his receivers to get open rather than finding holes. And on this play, actually, I remember, that, go look at this. It was the last play of the first quarter. He had a receiver on the left side of the field open in between the zone, but he didn't want to pull the trigger. Maybe he was thinking that the linebacker or the safety was going to drop down and get the interception. But he has enough arm talent to fit that ball in there. And it, it was pretty open. He could have thrown it to the side a little bit. But he didn't take the opportunity to throw that ball. He's really waiting on his receivers to get open rather than anticipating and throwing the ball. And that really dooms him. At the 14 minute of the second quarter, the OSU defensive front, again, they stuffed Watson on third and one. So it really showed off how their run defense could help keep them in the game. And that's something to see and something to keep in mind for Alabama, who has the number one rushing defense in the nation. But at times, the run defense really slowed up Watson in the Clemson offense. Um, number five of OSU, he got to Watson um, directly on that play, really hit him and stuck him and stoned him on that play. 
At the 11 minute 50 second mark of the second quarter, JT Barrett threw an accurate pass to Samuel. I uh, see Samuel again. Samuel made a lot of plays on a dig route, um, but <laughs> Samuel stone handed. So JT Barrett, one of these few times where he accurately threw the ball, uh, Samuel just it hit him in the hand and flew out. And that was unfortunate because that would have kept moving the ball. At the uh, 10 minute 31 second mark, I'm not sure if this was Deshaun or uh, JT, but I think it was Deshaun because I think I said this a few times throughout the game. Um, but it was perfect accuracy on a swing route. So Deshaun Watson did this like four or five times in the game where his receivers are going on a nice little swing route from the backfield. And the way he throws the ball at them, they're still taking a step or two up the field and the ball hits them in the hand and able to keep running at full speed and stride. And that's the type of pass that you need on a swing route. And he does that so consistently. At the 9 minute 38 second mark, Watson underthrew Mike Williams downfield. Um, and it's the type of throw. And like I said, this is dealing with his mechanics. When he throws the ball, he kind of throws it on the rope sometimes, really, really, instead of um, putting air under the ball or just driving it downfield. And the way he threw this ball, it was reminiscent of the interception that he threw to Eddie Jackson last year. So if you don't know what I'm talking about, go watch Eddie Jackson's interception of Deshaun Watson last year in the National Championship game and come back and watch this play at the 9-minute, 38-second mark of the second quarter. He underthrew the ball, and it was on a rope. It really didn't have any air, and so it couldn't really get to the receiver. And uh, DBs could have just undercut the ball and intercepted them. And so he does that quite a bit, actually. So that's actually one of the weaknesses in Deshaun Watson's passing is his ability sometimes to not read how to throw the ball to certain receivers. Next play at the 9 minute 35 second mark of the second quarter. It was another example. Like I said, this happened a lot of perfect accuracy on the swing route. He did it to Gallman this time. So Gallman was running his little swing route toward the sideline. Deshaun Watson threw it right in front of him. He caught it, got a few yards because he was able to lead him up the field. At the 8 minute 30 second mark of the second quarter, Watson overthrew Hunter Renfro badly. And Malik Hooker caught the interception on good bracket cover. So Hunter Renfro was running down the right side of the field, down the sideline, going toward the end zone. And like I said, Deshaun Watson at times on these deep throws, he has issues, threw the ball on a rope. Um, actually, he put a little bit more air in this, but it still got down there pretty fast, probably just because of his great arm strength. But it was about three or four yards past his receiver, and Malik Hooker, with his excellent speed and coverage, ran and caught up to the ball and intercepted it over his shoulder, catching the end zone. Uh, around the seven-minute mark, uh, Christian Wilkins or Watkins, I don't remember which one it was, you know, they, both of those defensive lines, number 42 and number 94, just watch out for those guys on Clemson's D-line. One of them, at the seven-minute mark, they broke through two linemen to sack Barrett. That is scary. That is absolutely, he broke through two linemen to do that. Really showed off uh, how, how forceful he was and how his ability to pass rush is really impacting the game. At the third, was he? Now we're into the, the third quarter. I missed a little bit of the game after that point, but I'm getting into the third quarter. And we're within the red zone within the 10 minute mark, somewhere around, you know, anywhere from the 11 minute down to the 9 minute mark. The OSU defense come alive, came alive. So they allowed Clemson to drive down the field and get all the way to the red zone. But the OSU defense flipped on the switch, came alive in the red zone, and they really, and they really got Clemson. Uh, to slow down their offensive success, and I think they had to kick a field goal or something. So, but up until that point, Clemson had been moving the ball down the field methodically. They had actually got a little bit of a run going. They um, weren't hitting big plays, but they were just moving down the field. But OSU stiffened up. At the seven minute fifty five second mark of the third, Clemson brings pressure with three blitzers, and they really trust their man to man coverage to bring cover with three blitzers. That basically means that every DB is on a receiver, man to man, no zone or anything, and they hit. On Barrett caused incompletion. The Clemson Blitz was able to get there so fast that they caused the incompletion. Um, their defense is speedy. I noticed that throughout the game. They were constantly running to the ball, getting there pretty quickly, kind of reminiscent of Alabama a little bit with how fast they are. They always use outside plays. They were netting barely anything. They were trying to do sweeps. They were trying to do screens, and it wasn't getting much success. At the 7 minute 40 second mark, another example of perfect accuracy on the swing. He threw a swing route to Ray Ray McLeod. Again, Going up the field, hit him in stride, going right up the field. And there was an RPO, a run pass option at the 7 minute 18 second mark. And Watson did a jump pass to Gallman, but it was behind him. So that was interesting to see. Gallman was open and Watson tried to hurry up and get the ball in there. Ball hit Gallman behind. 6 minute 50 second mark. Um, Lewis, number 59 of OSU on the defensive line, he blew by the freshman 
So Clemson has a freshman right tackle. I heard that in the game. Number 76, Pollard. And he blew right by him to get the sack on Watson. So if number 59, who is not as fast as Tim Williams, can blow by Pollard, I'm pretty sure Tim Williams might be able to. So that'll be an interesting matchup to watch. That freshman right tackle against Tim Williams, Ryan Anderson, and those guys on the Alabama line. At the 4 minute 50 second mark, Barrett again holding on to the ball too long. So he was another example of him doing that. 2 minute 10 second mark, Watson runs it in. Um, touchdown. On that drive, the QB run, it just wore on OSU. They just, just got worn down. They blew open a huge hole on that touchdown. Deshaun Watson was able to read the play, the hole like a running back, and ran right into it. And so that's one thing to look out for. Um, Alabama's run defense going up against OSU's QB runs, um, which hasn't had as much success this year. Uh, Clemson's, OSU, Clemson's QB runs haven't had as much success this year, but they really started to get back to it toward the end of the season. And it finally started to wear on. OSU at this point because their offense wasn't doing anything and the defense was constantly on the field. At the 1 minute 58 second mark, Barrett took a shot down the field to a wide open number 9. Uh, I don't know his name either. And he underthrew it badly. So it's just another example of JT Barrett having a bad year, just struggling, throwing the ball, holding on too long, not making good decisions. 1 minute 53 second mark, Barrett underthrew. Again, a second underthrow, number 83. And number 83 had number 2 of the Clemson defense beat. Had him beat so good. But the receiver had to wait on the ball, and it ended up being an incompletion because it was underthrown. And uh, like I said, underthrowing this deep ball really will uh, cost you in these games. At the 1 minute 40 second mark, so this is one of the highlights of the OSU running game, which hadn't had a lot of success in this game. But Mike Weber, oh my gosh, he trucked a defender. Um, it was like one of those NCAA football style trucks. Like he hit him and the guy just fell back and he kept going for a nice little game. Uh, but then he fumbled. So uh, you probably remember that play because of the fumble. But if you watch that play at the one minute 40 second mark, Mike Weber trucked the guy really, 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 really good. It's one of the best trucks I've seen this year. Uh, at the one minute three second mark, JT Barrett had Samuel wide open on a crossing route to the right sideline. This is the interception. That first play I was talking about way earlier in the video, if you remember, that's not the interception. This was the interception that he threw trying to throw a Samuel. And he had him wide open running toward the right sideline going on a crossing route. And he overthrew him. Samuel tried to jump up and catch the ball, but the ball flew over Samuel's head because JT Bear, he was scared to throw it. He was trying to compensate for the coverage over underneath. So he threw the ball much higher knowing, you know, Curtis Samuel's not a tall guy. And so the ball flew over and it led to an interception. Uh, the DB just jumped right up and caught. Well, he didn't have to jump. It came right into his hands. He caught it and started returning it. And then um, on the first play of the fourth quarter, Wayne Gallman, uh, he was a sledgehammer. They really started to be able to run the ball and wear on OSU at this point, just running the clock out. Um, and they were just using him, and he was just hitting him. And on the next play, he breaks free for about 15 more yards, and they, they really wore on him. At the 13-minute, 12-second mark of the fourth quarter, Malik Hooker with an excellent stick on the Clemson receiver. He hit him pretty hard. Um... And I think that play wasn't the first down, but they gave the first down to Clemson anyway. At the 12 minute 48 second mark of the fourth, Clemson still running Watson. And I thought this was interesting, but they were still running him, even though they're up 24 to 0. So I was thinking, eh, hey, maybe you want to protect Watson a little bit. At the 12 minute 2 second mark of the fourth, it was quite an effective blitz from OSU to get to Watson. So I saw in the game, you know, OSU at time wanted to send a little pressure, and, uh, and it worked. And so it'll be interesting to see how that works out with Jerry Pruitt, how many blitzes he'll call against Clemson. At the 10 minute 31 second mark of the fourth, Carlos Watkins abused the left guard of Ohio State for a sack. I mean, he 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 made he he pushed him right into the quarterback. Uh, the left guard was like, you saw the rest of the OSU line holding up a little bit. The left guard was back. He was pushed back. So that the, I told you, Wilkins and Watkins, these guys are, are scary, um, great, very disruptive. Uh, at the 9 minute 45 second mark, JT Barry was once again affected, affected by the pressure, and he just lost the ball into the end zone. Like I said, he's just been struggling, and that led to another interception, the second interception of the day. Uh, and actually, Deshaun Watson had his second interception as well. I don't know if I talked about it as much. Oh, yeah, yes, I did. That was the Malik Hooker interception. So, yeah, yeah. But, yeah, they both had two interceptions. So, Deshaun Watson actually only had one touchdown in this game. Um, and he threw two picks, so that would be something interesting. He's had 17 interceptions on the year, so be on the lookout for that being a story this uh, week. 
Um, at that point, you know, Clemson went up 31-0. OSU looked deflated. The game was over. Clemson's pass rush is danger dangerous, especially when they know you're passing. So throughout the whole game, OSU did a pretty good job holding up on the offensive line, and at times Clemson was really disruptive. But when they knew that they had OSU passing the ball, when they knew it, they were could not be stopped. They were dangerous. Number 56, Pagano of Clemson at the 5-minute, 50-second mark, absolutely destroyed right guard number 54 to stop the run on corp down. So these guys have some disruptive guys on that front, and they were just trying to preserve their shutout, and they got it. Clemson put in backups on, defense, uh, backups on offense after that, and they ran the clock out with their various backups, the backup quarterback, the running back, the receivers, and they ran the ball out. They got the ball with, what, like five minutes left in the game, and they ran it completely out. Amazing. OSU was defeated 31-0. to and so, you know, what I got from that game is that I've noticed that Deshaun Watson does have some interesting uh, throwing motions at time that does lead to bad throws. So that'll be something to look out for. I noticed that the Clemson defensive front is very disruptive. And I noticed that um, the Clemson DBs are they're pretty good, too. Uh, but, you know, JT Bear wasn't a perfect example of someone trying to take advantage of that. So I had to watch some more games. So those are my post-game thoughts on the Fiesta Bowl of 2016. Let me know what you think. Let me know if you think I missed something. Let me know what you think about Deshaun Watson and his passing and, uh, and this Clemson team overall. But be on the lookout for more videos.